Uh, today you're going to get to see a tour of our vintage bus. That's a 1947 Greyhound bus. It's been a couple of years since I've done a tour of the inside, so quite a few little changes have been made on the inside since then. Uh, just a real quick thing, if you're not a subscriber, I'd like to ask you to please click the subscribe button and also the bell notification. We try to post videos almost every single day and we have a lot of really cool projects coming up. Uh, maybe our current subscribers, if you wouldn't mind helping us out getting some new subscribers. If you like some of our videos, maybe share them on some of your social media pages, that would be great. But uh, otherwise, thank you very much for subscribing and enjoy the tour. Okay, so here is the tour of Lenny. He's a 1947 GM 3751 also known as a Silver Sides. And we can see the destination sign that we've got there. He is a lot of aluminum. The sides are all aluminum. We have uh, tool bay storage in the first bay. The second bay there is our generator. We have a 6.5 kilowatt gas Onan generator. Uh, that bay is our house battery bank and all of our liquids, uh, waste storage, fresh water, gray tank, all that kind of stuff. Um, up on the roof, we have two rooftop air units. They're both Dometic 13.5 BTU air conditioners. And then we also have two 100 watt solar panels that are up there, which we're planning on expanding the solar this year as well. And the engine you've seen recently, but just in case you're new, we just rebuilt it. That is a 671 Detroit diesel, so it's a two-stroke diesel. We get about 10 miles to the gallon on the highway and three miles to the gallon in the city. Manual transmission. The transmission is a 45 degree angle. It goes into the, to the rear end down there. To the back of the bus there. And the sides. It's pretty straight. 11R 22.5 wheels are on it. Probably going to end up going to 24.5s in the rear just to get a little more highway speed out of it. Cruises about 67 miles an hour. So going into the bus, we have a stair that you can deploy. If you watch at the bottom there, as you open the door, the stair will come down and give you a step. Now I can choose to have that step either deploy or not deploy, depending on how you pull the handle on the inside. So if, you, if I, they pulled up to a bus station that had like really high curbs, then they didn't need the step to come out. So as you come in, this is my wife's co-pilot seat. And she usually just kind of rests her feet up on the, on the dash there. We've got a nice bar, kind of help you up the stairs as you come in. Uh, the driver's area is pretty comfortable. Uh, lots of switches and dials. Most of them are just for lights and different things like that. One is for our solar panels. We have the in the in bus heating is still hooked up. As far as the dash goes, I have about every gauge and thing you can want except for my tachometer is not working. I have to get a new tack drive for it. So we have a rear view camera, we have a TPMS tire monitoring system, we have a GPS, we have a dash cam, and then all the engine gauges that are really important. I added a spring brake over there, that yellow knob, that's a parking brake and emergency brake. There's a fan there for the driver. This does have roll down windows, so that driver's window right there will roll down. Uh, I can monitor my generator from right up there with the voltage output. There's an hour meter for it. I can start it and stop it. Um, we have an AM FM with Bluetooth receiver uh, CD player that's in the dash. Um, it's actually down here. And then we have the Bluetooth thing that goes with it. So we can just, while we're driving down the road, have our phone stream whatever music we want. And there's the two speakers that are mounted up top. And then we also have two speakers that are mounted behind us. You can't see them. One's kind of back behind the couch there and the other one's on the other side. But it's a really nice sound going down the road. I do have the CB radio. It's nice with the truckers and stuff like that too. 
Um, there's a LED light that's up there too. It's pretty bright, so it's to. And there's one like that on the other side as well, on Kelly's side. And she has a matching fan there as well. A little cup holder that I made for her. There's one of the speakers down there that you can see. Okay, so looking back into the bus, as you come in, we have a waterproof commercial grade flooring that's in here. It looks like uh, kind of vintage wood, but it is actually vinyl. Uh, we have the futon couch, folds out into a bed. We do utilize it for some storage underneath and then also behind it. And then next to the couch, you'll see the table where we have a 40s Chevy pickup truck table. And then that's where my new YouTube workstation is at. And then over here on the other side in the interior, we have that big box under there, which is actually our propane furnace. We have a 30,000 BTU protein, propane furnace that heats the bus in the wintertime. An extra little fan there, a TV. The TV is on a mount where it can slide out and in. We can position it any way that we want. It's pretty nice to have. And we just added another Amazon fire stick to that TV so we can watch it in the back. Uh, the kitchen area, as you can see it, it's pretty open. We don't have a cooktop that's permanent, but we do have an induction cooker that we use. And then my wife also uses an Instapot a lot. Uh, we're actually vegans, so we don't, you know, she does a lot of cooking for us, but most of it we can do with the Instapot and or the induction cooker. We do have a um, electric cooked uh, hot plate as well that she can use if she needs to. And then if we're somewhere where we don't have electricity, uh, we have a butane one as well. Um, microwave, toaster, power inverter. We have one on the back wall there. We used to have another one that went out and then we just installed that new one that's not working right. So we're going to add another one. Uh, the solar panels are up there. I can choose, I can, the AB switch on the back wall, I can choose where the solar panels go to. They go to the house bank or the start bank. I have a 1500 amp hour lead acid battery bank, which is well over a thousand pounds. Um, but with the lead acid batteries, you don't ever want to drain them more than halfway. So technically, you know, I've got 750 amp hours that I can use in order to keep my batteries in good shape. And then uh, the new workstation, I really, I'm real happy with it. I think it turned out nice. That's something I've been working on this on my vacation here. Um, we do have a pizza oven down there. We have an air fryer that we use a lot that's put away. Also in the ceiling, um, we have a fantastic fan. I think it's amazing. Lots of LED lighting. Uh, that's the little Atom um, smoke detector that's up there. And then we also have um, the carbon monoxide detector as well. In the kitchen sink, we went with a smaller sink, but the uh, cabinets are kind of offset. So I made this drawer still a working drawer and just made it skinnier. So it'll still fit, you still didn't lose drawer space to do that. Uh, hot and cold running water. We have a six gallon water heater on board. All of these cabinet drawers, I installed custom locks on the back side. We flip a switch in the back. I'll show you up close to that. Um, and you can see how that works. So I use these remote uh, door locks to build this in the back of the drawers. That's a drawer latch, but the drawer will not open right now. And I can click a switch and unlock all the drawers, and then the drawers will open. And then I can lock them back, and then the drawers will not open. And that's all done with the auto uh, door lock mechanism. And it costs like $5. And that stops my drawers from flying open when we're driving down the road. And here's what that looks like in the bottom of the drawer. And there's another latch that's right here for the drawer that's normally down here. So go ahead and unlatch it. They're unlocked and locked. There we go. Very simple. Just hook them on a little metal rail that's got a screw going through it. Really easy to come up with something like that. Very inexpensive. And it's a nice way to latch the drawers without having something on the outside. It's an apartment style fridge. It is a 110 household style fridge. It's not an RV fridge. Um, it's screwed down. We also have latches on the side of it to keep the doors from opening up. 
Um, can't think of anything else really in the kitchen here. And then as you go back down, we have a side hallway. And the side hallway leads back to the bedroom and the bathroom. The bathroom is going to be on the left, and there is a sliding door. And the door slides back and forth. It's on a track. And this is a door that I made. Also, this little thing right here, when we turn our water pump on, we have a red LED that comes on. That lets us know the water pump's on so we don't accidentally leave a water pump on. You could always have a leak in an RV and walk away and, and use all of your fresh water. It'd be very, that'd be a very bad day. But uh, it's a corrugated metal door. Just slides on the track. It leads to the bathroom. The bathroom is an all-in-one, everything's in there. It's a wet room. So we have the floor, which is a waterproof floor, uh, glass tile walls, and then the galvanized tin on the back wall. Uh, the shower is on the wall there. We have a sink. When we're done with the shower, there's a little squeegee on the floor. We just squeegee any excess water down in that shower drain that's there. It's an RV style toilet. Uh, we have a switch in the bathroom and in the kitchen, both for the water pump. But, uh, it's a nice big bathroom. It does have a vent, skylight vent that opens up. And uh, I made some reclaimed lumber for the shelves to hold the toiletries and stuff in there. And then again, it's just a sliding door. And then when you go back to the bedroom, nice, I like that do not disturb sign. Um, it is also a pocket door that I built. So it slides out and it's got a little roller wheel on the bottom. And then it has the shape of the bus roof. So it comes out and meets the wall there. So it's just a nice little slider door. That way we don't have to have swinging doors and things like that to take up space in the bus. Come back to the bedroom. It does have a queen size bed. Uh, in the back there, we have another TV that has a fire stick on it. It's up on that shelf there. If I can come down and get it better. And then we have that Marshall amplifier, which is hooked to the TV. It gives really nice sound. It's also Bluetooth. So you can do Bluetooth radio from your iPhone and stuff like that. I have a really large over the bed cabinet up there. Uh, see, I don't have a lot of storage in the bus. So that's one of the few places that I have blank storage. We didn't want a lot of overhead cabinets and things like that taking up room. We wanted that more of that open concept style look in here. Uh, on the opposite wall, on the opposite wall here, we have this dresser that's set up. And uh, so my mine and my wife's clothes are all in the dresser. And then we have a little extra Dyson fan up there and another ceiling unit. More of the LED lighting throughout. There's also under the cabinet LED lighting behind the bed that changes all kinds of different colors as well. The bus is 35 feet long, eight feet wide. One of the other neat things that we have is we don't drink water out of our holding tanks ever. So we drink all of our drinking water is out of these five gallon jugs that we buy. And uh, that little pump we got from Amazon, it's rechargeable. So it's an electric pump and you can just stick your glass or whatever you're cooking with and just press a button and start and stop. Or it can do a pre-measured amount too. It was very inexpensive, but we use it all the time and I love it. It makes it so convenient to come out of the five gallon jugs. Uh, not a lot of furniture. I've got my chair and the little footstool there. I don't know that there's anything else really worth talking about on here. A couple little little knickknacks here and there that mean a lot to us. But uh, I do have that. Uh, I have a couple of different Greyhound hats. But, uh, there's one of them that's there. But, uh, the whole driver's compartment's all pretty original up there still. The original placard is still there with the serial number. Uh, on the Silver Sides bus, if you're getting one, the after like the right around serial number 500, they made some changes to them. Uh, the post 500 is a little bit better bus to have if you can do it. The parts are a little bit more readily available. When I got it, the dash it was that rough textured paint. And it was pink with green accents. There was a tile that was all down on the floor, glued down with like a construction adhesive. It was like broken tile, pink in color. Took a lot of work to get it out of there. So we're slowly working on things. Just 
a little diff a different kind of style. The curtains aren't anything they're going to be up for a long time. We just wanted something to block sunlight and give us a little privacy. But uh, I think the, the lines are really neat and clean. It's got kind of a modern look, but still kind of industrial with a hint of vintage. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's, this is our bus. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, real quick, one thing, I'm gonna add a link in the description to that water pump uh, on Amazon, if that's something you're interested in. I, I use it all the time and we love it. So if you have an RV and you use those five gallon uh, jugs of water or even for your home, uh, just having an electric pump form that's rechargeable is amazing and I love it. So I'll put a link to it in the description. Thank you again.